Hello there, I'm Thomas from Shida in the parking lot. In my previous video about compressors, I talked about the main parameters and what the knobs do. In some compressors, you can find some extra parameters that help you shape your tone even further. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Let's start with the input and the output gain knobs on both sides of the compressor. They're here to give you the flexibility to adjust the level of your signal, for example, if something is too loud or too quiet. Of course, they can be used to level match your input signal and your output signal, so you can hear what the compression does and not just the volume difference. Here in Logix compressor, the makeup and output knobs have almost the same function, that is to adjust the volume of your compressed signal. However, the big difference between the two resides in the distortion settings you can use in this compressor. Because the makeup knob is placed before the distortion stage and the output knob is placed at the end of everything, so it's really just a general volume adjustment. A fun part of using analog gear is that they color the tone of your signal with the component they use or the saturation they can bring in by enhancing certain frequencies. Here in Logic, you can find three different types of distortion settings that add their own vibes and to simplify, the soft will be the most aggressive one and the clip the less aggressive saturation settings. So experiment with that and see what works the best with your audio. Add that to all the emulation of modern and classic compressors you have in Logic and you will end up with a lot of very nice compressor flavors. I'm sure there's a similar behavior on other compressors with makeup and output gain or analog and distortion settings, so don't worry too much if you're working on another DAW or other compressors. There's always other ways to add saturation anyway. Okay, so let's put the makeup gain to zero and play with the different distortion settings to hear what it does to our drum loop. So I know here that the compressor settings might not be ideal to the situation, however it's like in the previous video, I really want to make you hear what the knobs do, so I'm just going to keep it that way. Then in Logix compressor you can find a built-in limiter. It's a really simple one with just a threshold knob that will prevent your signal to go higher than the value you set. Basically a limiter is a compressor with a really 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 high ratio that prevents anything to go louder. Limiting is mostly used in mastering, for example, but it can also be used to shape your tone. So try playing with it if you feel it can help, but don't overdo it too much because it can also kill the dynamic of your signal. Let's play with the limiter and see what it does to our drum loop. Okay, I've bounced the drum loop I had with the compressor right there and here with the limiter activated. And we can see that the limiter really prevents anything from going further than the threshold we set. I'm just going to do some back and forth between the compressed version and the limited version. And I think choosing one or the other would really depend on the context of a mix and not just the instrument by itself. And finally, I want to talk to you about the mix knob. It's a setting you can find on a lot of compressors and it will allow you to blend your original signal and your compressed signal together. It's a powerful tool and it can be used to keep the transient of your uncompressed signal, for example, and the loudness of your compressed signal. So you can have kind of the best of both worlds. Let's try to set a heavy compression settings and blend it with the original to see how it sounds.
Of course, the settings you will use for this technique will heavily depend on your audio source and what you aim to do with it. So for example, do you want to make your transients just pop up a bit more or do you want to make your instrument have more body to it? So basically what we did here with the mix knob is called parallel compression and there are other ways to do that. Parallel compression is a really simple thing to do. Basically, you're going to send your main audio source to another track, in which one you will have your compressor settings and then send it back to another bus. Let me show you how you can do that. So I'm going to send my track to another bus, which is right there. I'm going to create the track so they're next to each other. On this one, I will put my compressor to 100% mix for the compress signal and both of those tracks are going back to another bus. I'm also going to create the track. Let's not forget to send the drums here. This track here is sent to this one and both of the tracks are going to this one right there. So here both tracks are at the same volume, so we should have a 50-50% mix. Depending of how you want to blend your tracks, you'll maybe want your send in pre-fader mode. The interesting part of doing parallel compression with an auxiliary track is that now you have way more flexibility with what you can do with your signal. You can add some EQ, some saturation, or maybe some effects. So let's try to mix our original and our compressed signal and maybe add some EQ on the way to see how it sounds. That way, there's a lot more of possibilities of what you can do with compression. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think or if you have some questions in the comments. Please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.